the Land Rover Defender, and without a doubt, this is one of JLR's most iconic vehicles. And for the first time since 1983, it's all new. And you can finally get this piece of Britannia here in the United States. So in this video, we're going to walk you through the engineering that goes into this product, walk you through what it's like to drive, and show you the interior for a little bit. So enjoy. The first thing to know about the Defender is this thing's all about configurability. Do you want two doors or four? Do you want five, six, or seven seats? Do you want a metal roof, a folding canvas roof, or a moon roof? It's all up to you in this thing. And on top of that, capable of going pretty much anywhere off-road. And they do that through a clever series of packages from the questionably named Urban Package to the Adventure Package and the Explorer Package. You can equip a compressor, a snorkel, a roof rack capable of supporting up to three adults when they need to sleep up there, and a side box. This thing is endlessly configurable. So with that, let's talk about the priority of this cabin, and that is practicality and stowage. When it comes to interior storage, that's definitely one of the priorities of this vehicle. In fact, there's almost a minivan-esque level of available stowage in this cabin. The dash is hollowed out, and there is nearly seven liters of available space for all your knickknacks in it. The glove box is six liters, and when you don't have the optional center jump seat and you go for this open cubby design, you have nearly 13 liters. The glove box, which in this case is optionally cooled, has six liters of space. The door cards have five liters in the front, three liters in the rear. And because this is a Defender 110, the four-door variant, the trunk has an available 2,380 liters of available storage, and the door thankfully still opens like a traditional tailgate. This also has seven available seats in this variant. So the front seats are two traditional captain's chairs. The rear seats, the middle seats, are large enough for adults. They slide forward and aft, and they are large enough for three full-size adults. And the rear two seats, the rear jump seats, are really reserved for people you don't like or children. So with that out of the way, let's talk about interior material choice. When it comes to the interior of this cabin, like I mentioned earlier, it's endlessly configurable, which means the material choices you have can change. Do you want the baller edition? Do you want to be the envy of everyone at Whole Foods? You can do that. You can spend nearly $90,000 and equip your Defender with heated and cooled seats, premium leathers, and a 700 watt Meridian audio system. However, this is a more rough and ready model. So you get a 400 watt system, cloth and leather seats, and the cloth is a woven textile, which is easier to clean, and they are only heated, these seats. We also get a mix of other materials in this cabin that are all ruggedized. Your floor pans or your footwells are a rubberized texture, which is easy to clean out. It's not a drainable surface, so you can't just hit this thing with a hose, but they designed it so you can easily remove mud and other debris. When it comes to visibility and seating position, the Defender has it in spades. JLR will be the first one to point out to you that you have the highest available seating position in the Defender out of their entire product lineup. And there's a ton of glass in this thing. So if you wanna look down on all the poor people below you, you can do this in the Defender. When it comes to blind spots, there are almost none in this cabin. Again, there's a ton of glass in this thing, so it feels like you're sitting in a fishbowl. However, there is one small exception. When you have the exterior cargo box equipped, which is on the right side of the vehicle, if you are traditionally looking back there and not using your mirrors, there is a small blind spot. However, the mirrors and the 360 cameras available in this thing remedy that issue for the most part. Now, when it comes to the infotainment system, this is Pivy Point. It is the most recent variant of JLR's infotainment. It is a 1920 by 720 display, and it's powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon processors. It is a huge leap forward in JLR infotainment. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay work well, and it is a relatively intuitive system, and it is configurable. However, in this portion of the video, I'd normally talk about all the drive modes available and the four-wheel drive system and all the off-road modes. However, I will be saving that for the shop segment of the video. Now, audio systems. You have three available audio systems in the Defender. You have the base no-name system, which I have not tested. You have this 400-watt system and the optional above this 700-watt Meridian sound system. The 400-watt system for an off-road vehicle is pretty average. It's better than what you'd find in a Wrangler or a TRD Tundra or a TRD 4Runner, but it's still by no means 
class leading. And that's because the speakers had to be ruggedized, so they lack some of the higher end frequency response you're expecting out of a Meridian sound system. Now, the last piece of interior electronics I'm gonna talk about is the dash, specifically the instrument cluster and the available heads up display. This card does not have the HUD. However, I have used the HUD in other JLR products. It works pretty reasonably. The dash itself or the gauge clusters is all digital and configurable. So with that, let's head to the shop. Underneath the Land Rover Defender 110, I am going to take the ultimate back seat, like how I ride in this vehicle. <laughs> in the third row. In the third row, because this is yet another product that we're looking at. There's so much that went into designing this. I'm getting tired of it. Can't <laughs> I just have like a horse and buggy that just has wheels? They're, when you showed me, what is it called? Tech Beat? <laughs> <laughs> Their internal marketing documents. I, at first, I'm like, okay, this is this is stupid. Then you dive into it more, and it is so it is so masterful at how much they've done to make this thing so capable, while also being an urban warrior. So, what the Defender is now is now it's a car for yuppies that still is extremely capable off road. Because the reality is, 99.9% .9 of people who buy G wagons, who buy Wranglers who buy gladiators, never go off-road in them. They need a car that they can use every single day that gives the appearance of affluence <laughs> and you know that rough and ready lifestyle. And you can do that in this vehicle. And sadly, because we live in the Midwest, not in the, the Horn of Africa, we can't really off-road it. So look at other videos to do that. But what I'm gonna try to do is talk about all the engineering that went into this to make it that dual personality vehicle. Something you could drive every single day that is refined and comfortable, but can also you know, scale a building. Yeah, and that's what makes this, what is, it's, it's so unique in that regard. And this is the new wave of SUVs, the modern generation of SUVs that have now gone from kind of off-road and cutesy to so overbuilt, so overkill, but almost providing that luxury car or luxury type ride and interior quality experience. This is like the Cayenne in levels of over-engineered, but it's trying to accomplish something else. This is trying to give you that truck and luxury thing versus the Cayenne where it's supposed to be a sports car. And that's the next thing I'm gonna talk about, reliability. I'm gonna get this out of the way because it's the number one thing in the comments. JLR is trying to address the reliability issues. They have them. Look at TFLs, they've gone through three of these things already. But I will say in their defense, it is extremely complicated. Yes. So if you buy one of these, know that you have a warranty. Or if you're leasing it, rely on that. And if you're buying it in five or 10 years, then complain then. But this vehicle is designed for its first owner. Yeah, no, absolutely. And if you're looking at it as a new product, which what's what we do, the coolest products are the new ones, the hot ones, what can they pack in? It goes all the way from the new PS5, which if this is old, ignore this, phones, computers, everything that is here and now is like amazing. And then like five years later, like, oh, what, what was I thinking? So today we're gonna talk about what makes this unique or Jack's gonna talk about what makes it unique and we'll get it out on the road. So this is built on the D7X architecture that JLR has. Things like the Discovery and the Range Rover Sport are on that. X is unique to this Defender and that stands for extreme. <laughs> So what that means though, is this is the most rigid and strong JLR platform ever. They've reinforced this to handle the abuse they're expecting or would like to expect that this vehicle takes. So in the front, you have steel forged, or they call it forged steel subframes with enormous double wishbone suspension components. All of this stuff is massive. So they use steel subframes and all aluminum components. What was the mindset behind that? Abuse. Okay. So the body structure is aluminum. However, when you're hitting things like these control arms or the subframes, you're probably gonna bend things or break things. So they wanted it to be a little more robust than the aluminum. Well, JLR claims that the impact or the curb test, where they basically slam this thing into the curb, this is the strongest vehicle they have in their okay. lineup. All right, makes so sense. So the next thing to talk about is suspension. It's air suspension on the Defender 110s, and it is a coil suspension on the Defender 90s, which is the two-door. And when you have the air suspension, you can raise this thing up enormously high. Yeah, I think it was 136 millimeters yeah, or something. Yeah, it's a joke. Like up front, and it's even more in the back. So this thing is made up through its electrical systems for its off-roading capability. So you have six different modes plus water fording mode. So based on like snow and sand, ruts, rocks, I don't know, 
Whole Foods mode. Yeah, right. It'll change the traction control. The center locking electronic diff will change how it's opening and closing, where it's routing power, and ride height. So when you're in water fording mode, it raises the vehicle to its maximum height, shuts the HVAC system down, preloads the brakes. So when you get out of the water, it immediately starts cleaning the water off the brakes. So it's, I mean, it's mind blowing. And it changes the traction control and the way the, obviously, the differentials are working as well. Aerodynamics, aerodynamics, which is the other thing. If you compare this to a Wrangler, and yes, the Wrangler did a lot to increase its aerodynamics. But in comparison, this has active aero vanes in the engine to reduce drag and help with efficiency. They've cleverly designed the body panels in this to reduce, again, drag to get this as aero efficient as possible. Obviously, on top of that, because of the water fording, they had to make sure that the aerody aerodynamic panels in the front as well allowed you to properly enter the water. So yeah. it's, you know, it's mind-blowing stuff. And you have sonar. So when you're driving this along and you are fording through water, it uses the built-in sonar, the, basically the camera system, to detect how deep you are. This is the polar opposite of the Jeep Wrangler. The Wrangler accomplishes what this does, sacrificing the on-road capability for all mechanical systems doing the off-road. This is trying to bridge both, and the only way they could do that was with electronics. So we made it to the rear of the Defender 110. Let's talk about suspension. You have an integral link or a multi-link rear end, and you still have the aluminum control arms with the steel subframe. Everything's overbuilt back here. I mean, just take a look at the size of this. Looks like you're gonna be towing mobile homes with this, Jack. And speaking of towing capacity, Mark, it tows 8,200 pounds, which means you can tow a lot of PWCs. Yeah, I couldn't tow my mobile home. I got too much stuff in it right now. <laughs> you can fit nearly 600 pounds of static load on the roof. Well, you can have a dance party up top as long as everyone weighs less than 100 pounds. Sure. And you have a locking rear electronic differential, which works with your center diff and all your drive modes, which will show or have shown already the infographics of how the traction control systems and the center locking diffs lock and unlock based upon your mode. So it can lock the front or rear? Yes. Wow. It can lock the center? It can lock, sorry, it can lock the center or rear differentials. Okay, but not the front? No. Okay, and it does not have disconnecting sway bars? Either. No, it does not. And this is a all the time four wheel drive system. So unlike in a Wrangler, you can't go into just rear only. Yeah, this is the first new Defender since 1983. And again, because this is a unibody, there's some controversy behind them. But as we talked about a little bit in the beginning, they did their best to make this more robust. They put this through a lot of stress testing like you probably can imagine to make sure this could take some of the impacts you're expecting. The last thing I wanna talk about is this is one of the only cars in existence that comes with a, a purely defensive satin wrap. So depending on the paint you get, you can option an entire satin wrap to protect the body from some- It's like PPF or- Essentially. PPF. Gotcha. Well, let's take a look at the engine bay. I'm getting real twitchy right now. All right, Mark. All right, Mark, here in the United States, we have two engine options. An inline four, a four cylinder turbo that makes almost 300 horsepower, or this. This is an inline six with a twin charge system. So you have a 48 volt battery system that powers the electric supercharger that then hands off the boost to the turbocharger. So what you get is 396 horsepower and over 400 foot pounds of torque. And 100 pounds of those torques comes from the electric system. It's very complicated. And it's all made it to the eight speed automatic in this thing. So I guess Mark, with that all said and out of the way, let's take this on the road. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Oh boy, oh boy, Mark. We're in the Land Rover Defender 110 with the inline six twin charged engine. Oh yeah, that's right. And uh, this thing is super refined for what I was expecting. I thought this, just looking at it, it looks like a bread delivery. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it was gonna ride like shit and it surprised me, that's the biggest thing. Yeah, I. I didn't have a lot of high hopes for this vehicle. The last Range Rover we did was disappointing, to be fair. Uh, this is basically like a Jeep Wrangler that went off to finishing school. It has still got the off-roady lifestyle look to it. It's still like the Wrangler, like the 4Runner TRD Pro, extremely capable off-road. But on-road, I think this has the best driving dynamics and best, I guess, most refined feeling behind it. Would you disagree or agree with that statement? Yeah, for, for the type of driving that the people, the target demographic that's going to buy this, it has an amazing command of the road, and it is a way, 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 way more refined Jeep. And you still have a lot of the capability, so this is a huge investment, as we learned in the shop, at trying to blend off-roady and luxury. Yeah, and I think 
Obviously, there is an enormous price spread to this vehicle. The one we have is tested as $79,000, or nearly $79,000, which is a ton of money. But you can get this with coil springs and kind of the poverty spec in the low 50s, which, again, is still a ton of money. So I guess as a vehicle you're going to drive every single day, which is kind of the whole point of this thing, let's talk about the ride quality first. Yeah, so I think over pretty much everything, which again surprised me a lot you can go into ruts potholes and i purposely nailed a couple potholes on the way here i'm just like oh, how's it gonna be <laughs> i drove over the roundabout the curbing just to go over it and it, it just the, nothing seems to face it i mean it, it because of the ride height there is a lot of roll here it, it this is very top heavy so this is something that you're gonna basically strap yourself down in this seat roll around with your Arby's or lattes <laughs> and just basically go straight. You're, you're not going to be doing anything but taking this in traffic. No, I, I agree, but I do think it does a better job around the tight stuff. Admittedly, no one is doing limit handling in any of these piles, yeah. but it does a better job than the Wrangler and the Gladiator, and in some ways the Forerunner. I think this is the most, again, it's not car-like, but the most car-like, and if you are the soy latte crowd and you were buying this more as a, a statement to look I've made it I'm, I'm affluent as you like to say <laughs> and I like doing the outdoorsy thing yeah this does it really really well and on the other flip side of that if you somehow get sent to Nambia or somewhere in the you know the Sahara and you want to yeah. go off-roading you can do that like all the marketing shows people doing but this is the reality you're driving it on the street you're behind a Santa Fe yes. while it's raining doing yep. five miles an hour underneath the speed just limit praying raging. you're gonna get home yep. yeah and, you know, as someone who's affluent, <laughs> I, I appreciate this. So where it's kind of let me down, and I don't have as much time in this as you, is I feel like this is really loud. I feel like there's a lot of road noise, and part of that is a byproduct of having all this glass. I mean, you're, you're driving you're, a fishbowl, basically. Yeah, you are, you are, and that's part of the charm of it, because you're trading off some of the isolation for the style and the look of this, and it does look unique. But we don't talk about styling but this is the next generation of these off-roady truck things now the bronco you're probably going to have an fj cruiser soon um and i, I like it because it's different At it's least, got a lot of charm charm <laughs> i mean but that's the thing everything's look looks so cookie cutter in the suv market so this to me at least at this point in time is very 2020 it's very different, and I think that's what's going to captivate it, it, a lot of people. It doesn't have the timeless look of the old Defender. I will say this drivetrain, though, is, again, interesting. When they told me, or when I was reading about the inline six in this thing, the fact that it's twin-charged, really one of the first for JLR as a brand, I was immediately thinking about all the trips to my dealership. I was thinking about all the trips to the dealership and my Volvo, because it's got a turbo and... Uh, a supercharger. And how's that gone for you so far? Well, I got a supercharger leak. Uh, so, you know, again, there's certain products like this that you have to set the expectation level. If you have a, a vague understanding of what you're buying into here, you're going to know that one, you're probably leasing this, or if not, you have a warranty and you're going to. Long one. You're a long one. You're going to plan to make some trips to the dealership for some coffees and some uh, cinnamon rolls. <laughs> So there's a little bit of lag, but having just recently raced your S2000 in this thing <laughs> off the line, I did dust that thing pretty sufficiently. So the powertrain in this feels plenty fast. When you're moving, it does motivate this mass to 60 in the low sixes. For something this big is very, very impressive. You will annihilate a Jeep Wrangler in this thing, I think at least. It is. It feels dramatically faster. Really dynamically, the steering's pretty slow, but it is precise. My only complaint, really, in the way this thing drives, are the brakes. They're drive by, they're brake by wire, and I think they're a little touchy. And if you are again the latte crowd, um, it might perturb you a little bit. Uh, maybe I I noticed it, but to me, like I adjusted to it pretty quickly, and it's about. I think it's sufficient enough to to be able to modulate it under load. Sometimes you have this aggressive brake bite um, on certain cars until they're loaded up and then they become a little bit more natural so there might be that, that tuning that's built in there but I back to your acceleration point god it's did you start <laughs> dude holy <laughs> shit, does it reek well here? mark i oh. know how it is for you oh my god <laughs> no that's that's the sound of uh, that's the smell of jlr holy <laughs> can't breathe 
markets normally. You know, thankfully this time it yeah, wasn't me. It's usually me, me dude. Yeah. I'm usually just cranking, blowing up the pipes in the bathroom. No, but <laughs> back to the back to the ex acceleration. The acceleration is going to it surprised me because you typically you get with the you get these big JLR like houses on wheels and they don't really have a good they don't have a great sound and they don't have a ton of pull and I think aside from that like second that the lag off the line it sounds good and it pulls and there's plenty of torque this is going to be way more than enough power for the average person buying this in fact it could probably use even less power i agree with you and and lastly to talk about before we get into the final thoughts the trans this is the corporate zf8 speed it's pretty good well the transmission there's nothing that you even notice about it which is the perfect setup for this the fact that i didn't think about it when i was driving I'm like hmm, what's that doing <laughs> what's it not doing no it, it works really well for what it is all right mark let's head into the final thoughts sounds good thoughts on the Land Rover Defender. JLR accomplished exactly what they set out to do with this SUV, and that's bringing the Defender kicking and screaming into the 21st century, and honestly, they knocked it out of the park. This SUV oozes charisma, has some of the best ride and body control of any extremely capable off-road SUV in its segment, and on top of that, it has a tremendous powertrain. The interior, albeit, is very quirky, but very, very usable. You could use this SUV every single day, and the Meridian audio system makes it a standout, again, in this more rugged interior landscape. However, it's accomplished this Jekyll and Hyde personality with both being great on-road and great off-road with the use of very sophisticated electronic and mechanical systems. And honestly, with JLR's questionable history of reliability, you could be in for a bad time. However, if you're gonna buy this thing with an extended warranty, or you're gonna lease it, I'm sure you'll be really, really happy. This is one of my favorite SUVs of 2020, and I look forward to spending more time in one in the future.